6 powerful astrology techniques that are useful to business owners, C-suites and high-level executives. One of the techniques that is very little known in astrology is something called astrocartography or what I nickname world map astrology. So essentially what an astrologer does is to take the chart of a business owner or a leader and we map it across the world map. And what this does is that it allows me to see how your energy plays out in specific areas in the world. And it explains why some people can be very successful doing business in Hong Kong and then when they try to take it to Italy and the whole thing just bombs. Or perhaps why um, a particular influencer is very popular in a certain region but again that same popularity doesn't always translate. Now one of my clients does a lot of talks in China pre-pandemic and uh, what happens is that his partner would go and identify many cities in China China where they would go on stage to sort of introduce to people and to, and to educate people on how to trade forex. So what happened was, I remember one year when he came to look for me and I did this astro cartography thing for him. As a bit of an experiment, he gave me the list of cities that he was going to speak at and I told him some of those cities were going to be a waste of time and that he wasn't going to build any rapport with the audience. And at first he said, oh no, no, my partner said that these places are going to be very popular. And I said, well, I mean, just go to China, try it out and let me know how it works. Works. And I also identified for him a couple of cities which I thought that he might do quite well in. So he thought it was quite fun and that he would just go and check it out. After he was done with his little tour in China, and he came back to see me again, he said, Oh my god, me, is that you were right? Then he ticked off certain cities on my list and he said, like, those places were exactly as you said, complete waste of time. And then some cities perform a lot better than we expected. So subsequently, before he goes on his little tour in China, he always gets his list of cities beforehand. Uh, he comes to look for me and then I, I'll usually do uh, this astro cartography for him. So sometimes these things are usually quite set um, throughout your entire life but sometimes year on year these energies can change so that I would sort of advise him okay maybe you want to put a bit more resources in certain cities where I think your closing rate might be a bit better. Now when we talk about relationship astrology I think most people imagine that this is like your boyfriend girlfriend sort of astrology but I can tell you as business owners and people who are signing important contracts if you are a C-suite person and you're the one negotiating contracts quite often you have you and then there's the other party. So what happens is that we want to find common ground especially as if both parties cannot always agree on a contract terms. And I think also if you have long-term collaboration, you also want to know where areas of discord can happen or perhaps where people can share the same values or I will also find it's quite useful to know when you don't share the same values as the people that you're working with. So what we found is that we, we can actually identify to a good extent whether or not certain partnerships have longevity or certain partnerships just don't work and they just sort of like you know explode within two to three months of like you signing a contract. We've also found that it's quite useful for people who are about to start new companies especially if you feel like uh, oh I want to work with this guy because we are best friends and sometimes best friends don't always translate to very good business partners. We also want to see okay what what kind of skill sets that both parties can bring to the table and sometimes we actually uncover some blind spots that some people have certain talents which they didn't at first identify that wow this guy can do this we can actually incorporate into our business and make us stronger or have more like champion factors that they can bank on. One businessman that I remembered uh, had been dealing with bird's nest and what he wanted to do was to bring his product uh, to the huge market of China. And at the time, he was in the very early stages of negotiation with uh, quite a powerful person in China who had the power to give him a lot of distribution network. So he had a bit of concerns. Uh, he definitely had no concerns about how much money he was going to make from this collaboration, but he felt a bit like he was second guessing whether or not to work with this guy. So when I did a bit of his uh, relationship astrology for him, I uncovered that he felt very outclassed in terms of power with with this man and it turned out that some of the relationship was a bit difficult because they would go and sing karaoke and and, uh, and that China man would act like he was some kind of servant uh, in the karaoke room and that was something that really bothered him. So when, when we did the relationship astrology, I, I uncovered many other areas uh, in their business relationship where this man was going to play a very very dominant role over my client and for my client, I think eventually he decided that um, he was uncomfortable enough with how he was being treated and that's why he decided decided not to proceed with this partnership even though it could have made him a lot of money but he decided that his mental well-being was important. Now the third lesser known technique is called horary and this is a very old technique that is based on the fact that in the past people didn't used to have very accurate birth times. So when you go and see an astrologer it's a bit like asking okay am I going to win the war right so then the astrologer would sort of set the time 
based on the question and then I would answer. Now I find Horary to be very useful when during consultation if I get a very pointed question from a business owner. If he asks me outright, okay I've got this new campaign, will it work? I'm going to launch it in March. Like, is this going to bomb or am I going to be successful? So when I get a very clear question like that, I set the chart for that moment and usually it answers the question. So one example I can remember is uh, one of my business owner clients was on the verge of hiring a new guy from Indonesia. And he was not sure because this was the first time that he was hiring somebody from outside of his home country. And what happened was, I saw in the chart, he basically asked me, can I hire this guy, will it work out? And when I did the horary for him, I told him not only is this employee going to be one of your longest lasting employees but that your biggest client will love this guy. And so I told him, go ahead and hire this guy, I don't think you are going to regret it. And what happens is, uh, well, this client came to see me about uh, maybe about seven or eight years ago. Not only is the employee still there, their number one Japanese client loved this person so much that they've given this employee a table in their office. And although he's still technically an employee of my client, but he actually works with, with this customer and the customer has renewed year after year with no problems at all, simply because they love this employee so much. Well, the fourth technique, which is not so little known, is a prediction and forecast or what some people know as fortune telling. But you see, for a business owner, this isn't just fortune telling, it's, it's very practical. You essentially need to know how things are going to be like for your business in the next three to four quarters so that just in case something isn't going according to plan, at least you know beforehand and you can plan. So the best example I can cite is a theatre practitioner who had come to see me in 2019 because he was preparing for all his shows in 2020. So he told me that okay, he's got all his actors, all his makeup artists, he's already booking all his venues for his shows. And then when I did his timeline for him in the year 2020, I told him, I said, hey bro, I, I just don't see that things are going to be smooth. In fact, I told him in April, I see you sitting at home doing nothing. And he said, impossible. I already have everything all set up. In fact, I'm on the verge of putting my down payment on all my venues. It's, it's a large amount of money. And so what happened was, because of my warning, he decided to hold back on some of his payments and he delayed a few things. And it turned out by about February, March, as you all well know, in 2020, COVID happened. It meant that it, was, it became uncertain whether or not his shows would go on. So there was a good excuse to not go ahead to pay. And in fact, in April, all shows were cancelled by the Singapore government. So it was actually a very good thing that he was told beforehand. And according to my client, he told me it saved him more than $100,000 because he was forewarned that his shows were not going to go according to plan. Now, the fifth lesser known technique is called elections. So in astrology, election means that we elect a date. It is commonly known as date selection. So for business owners and leaders, this can be very useful because often you are tasked with selecting when something happens. Perhaps you are going to incorporate a subsidiary or you are going to launch a new product or a new event and you need to say whether it happens in September on the 26th or whatever, right? So you basically want to pick what is superstitiously an auspicious date. Now in Western astrology, it's not just about whether something is auspicious or not auspicious, but rather for practical reasons, does this birth time of your event or your product does it match the intention of the business owner or the leader? So a good example I can share with you is uh, one of my clients organizes conferences for decentralized finance. So this was back in the day before Bitcoin and cryptocurrency was like really huge. So he had all these events that were meant to sort of educate people about what cryptocurrency was. And what happened was this client actually had a negative example because the previous event that he did went very badly and some of his collaborators were quite disappointing. So what happened what happened was that uh, he wanted to come in and he wanted to make sure that he set a date for his next event in a way that will help his operations be very smooth but also because he was launching quite a few new products and uh, new systems at the time and he wanted to make sure that he attracted the right audience for him to be able to get as much participation for his new launches as possible. So what this is what I use election for and we selected a good date for him and as far as I know, he hasn't had any complaints and in fact, uh, he, said, he told me that the event went really well compared to the one before that where a lot of things went wrong. So the sixth lesser known technique is psychological astrology. And I think we don't talk about this enough, but actually leaders can be very lonely people as well. There's a lot of pressure to make the right decision and quite often leaders are put in an unenviable position of making very unpopular decisions. So what really happens is that much as I've talked a lot about techniques that are for leaders to make more money or to have their operations be more smooth, but half the time, the astrologer can play a bit of a confidant role for 
a leader. And psychological astrology can often explain why we make some of the not so good decisions. So why sometimes you're afraid or sometimes even CEOs can cave in to peer pressure. So I do remember of one incident where a CEO had been very upset because um, a product that he was very proud of, he had been working on it for a number of years, had been launched ahead of time in advance because there was a lot of peer pressure from the board of directors to make sure that it went out. So because there was so much haste in launching the product, there were a few problems and they had gotten a few complaints from their customers. So I know that this CEO was quite angry la, at, at being uh, ha having done this and in fact he had wanted to retract that product and to apologize to customers and say okay give us a couple of months we'll relaunch the product but you see the board of directors was not very okay with it because it meant that it would affect the, the value of their their stocks and things like that so that's why for, for him he wanted to make an unpopular decision to veto the board of directors and to insist on retracting his product but i know that he was feeling very scared and he was wondering like is what is stopping me from being a good leader and to champion my product. What I did with him was less of the fortune telling, less of the world map stuff, but he wanted to know what is stopping me from being strongly determined to be a good leader and we worked with that. And as far as I know, he actually did go and retract his product. He said sorry to his customers and he has since relaunched his product um, to much better reviews. Click on the button, get in touch with my team and they'll advise you on how you can work with me.